Want to learn about stocks, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and the metaverse? Join richtv.io. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Quebec Nickel Corp, David Patterson. How are you doing today, David? Rich, I'm doing great, and I really appreciate you having me on today. My pleasure. Really excited to have you back on the show. And you guys have outperformed your peers in this sector. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what's new with Quebec Nickel? Okay, that's great. Great observation too, Rich. Uh, when you look at uh, nickel explorers in Canada, and especially in the Abitibi, you're looking at companies that have been from a high to a low of somewhere around 80% drop. And I look at ours and yeah, it's we've dropped and we've dropped in light of the whole market of dropping, but we're down about, oh, I'd say 50%, 40% to 50%. One of the reasons why I believe that our drop hasn't been as drastic. So we've been trying to do a lot of education and explain to people what we have in the Abitibi in nickel is not what everyone else has in nickel. And, and this is important, and, and I'll uh, stress this over and over about nickel and sulfides and how important class uh, one nickel is compared to nickel and silicates, which is what roughly 40 to 60% of the nickel content in the Abitibi is in silicates. Now, I see you started Q1 with a single drill and then added a second and third drill. Can you comment on the drilling success at Fortin and the Ducros Ultra Mafic Complex? Well, that is that is one of the things that I just am amazed at, the, the speed that we are accelerating um, from one drill, two drills to three. So our, our drilling started about 10 months ago right now. Uh, we announced the first discovery, which was holes uh, 9, 10, and 11, and we did that in May. So one drill uh, made that discovery. Uh, we drilled through the summer. We decided we needed to bring, bring on a second drill. We announced that we're doing continuity drilling. That means the fourth hand where we made the discovery. We're moving a drill to the south of fourth hand and another one to the north. And all they're doing is trying to outline the size of uh, the, um, the fourth end deposit. And I'll use the word deposit right now. Uh, on the west side of the property where we have these ultra mafic and mafic rocks, these are important rocks because they make up the, the rock assemblage that you would want to see if you're going to bake a nickel cake. And that you need uh, a number of elements. I'm going to say uh, sulfur bearing rock which you would have in the, um, in the volcanics or the sediments. Uh, you have nickel bearing rock and that would be the ultra mafic and the mafic rocks. You have, uh, you have to cook it at the right temperature and pressure. And that what we think is this um, magma being injected into this country rock allows it to digest this rock that has the, the sulfur. It breaks the bond that we have between the sulfur uh, sorry, between the nickel and the silicate and recombines it with a, uh, uh, an atom of, um, of uh, iron, an atom of uh, sulfur and the atom of nickel. And what drops out and precipitates out is a nickel sulfide. And that sulfide is the nickel sulfide is called pentadite. A lot of the work we've done this year on the science side is to prove to ourselves and others that the nickel that we have is different from everyone else in the Abitibi, that our nickel is not predominantly, but 100% nickel and sulfides. And this is important because nickel and sulfides becomes a class one nickel. Class one nickels become a, uh, through the refinery process, become a nickel cathode. And nickel cathodes are what are desperately needed for the electric vehicle for its battery. So on a battery, you hear it's a lithium battery. It is uh, lithium, but it has cobalt, copper, platinum, palladium, and nickel in it. So we have all of those. 
Fantastic. Now, last month you announced a possible extension of the 410 still zone. Is this part of the continuity drilling mentioned in Q2 press releases? Definitely. Uh, this is the continuity drilling. So this is this was discovered by, uh, you know, again, uh, Gary uh, DeShooter is our VP exploration and has tons of nickel experience with um, major mining companies, uh, Fulton Bridge, Anglo-American, et cetera. So what he wanted to do is get a, um, a characterization of the rock, the country rock in which the Fortan is sitting. And he drilled underneath the Fortan and 65 meters below the Fortan and about 50, 60 meters to the west, he hit another, which looks like it could be an extension of the Fortan, or in fact, could be a completely new zone. So the goal here is in Q1 2023 is to focus on this new area that we've just found uh, and see if we can put that, bring that into the same category as we have in continuity drilling in the Fortan and also follow up Fortan drilling to the south. We see a number of things that are um, look like the same geophysical signature as Fortan, but are slightly buried under overburden. David, what are the benefits exploring and mining in the Abitibi region? I can't say enough good things about Quebec. The people in Quebec are, um, they're, they're mining friendly in the Abitibi. Uh, you have so many different copper, zinc, and gold mines in the Abitibi. You have a huge population that you can draw on that have the technical expertise either to be miners or explorers or provide the ancillary services you need in drilling, geophysics, et cetera. That's, that's the first. The second is uh, the infrastructure itself. We're going to be um, maybe an hour to the north of Valdor. We can drive there. Your coffee is still warm when you get out of a truck and you're 200 meters off the road to see the Fortan. So exploration costs are so much lower in this part of Quebec. The other thing about infrastructure is it, you, it really lowers the risk of a discovery being able to get over that hump of being economic. So a lot of deposits say in the far north, you need to have 10 million tons of 3% nickel to be able to say, okay, let's go ahead and do a, um, a preliminary economic assessment. We think it's so much less when you have rail, power, water, road, all right in our community. Uh, to our north is a little town of uh, Quevillon, which we're looking to uh, center our operations going forward. Uh, they have an, an airstrip that you can fly from Billy Bishop to that airstrip in about an hour. And we can have people um, be on the ground, uh, land be on the ground at our property within 20 minutes of wheels uh, hitting the tarmac. So this is really lowers the cost of exploration and lowers the risk that your deposit would be economic. David, how does the Ducros project compare to other projects in the Abitibi? Rich, that is that super question that I know you always come up with. It just zeroes in. So why? Why, is the, why do I say the Ducro is a, um, a unicorn? Uh, back in, oh, like it, it was 08, when I first saw the first drill hole on the Fort Hand, it was announced by Glenn Mullen's company, and um, it became, eventually became the Z group of companies. But that announcement, when I looked at that, having been raising money for nickel companies in exploration in Quebec and in Labrador, uh, these numbers were significant. And they showed nickel, they showed copper, platinum, and palladium. And getting that um, metal suite, I guess, together and being able to look at the rocks and draw an inference from seeing calcopyrite, which is a copper sulfate, sulfide, and then knowing that the nickel was grading 0.38 or 0.4 nickel, a, the assumption is that the same chemical and uh, physical conditions that created calcopyrite would have been there to create the nickel sulfide pentlandite. And so fast forward uh, 12 years through some pretty troubling times in the mining business, 
Uh, we made a deal with Glenn Mullen to acquire his property. We uh, raised $8 million uh, last year. And what did we start focusing on was the Fortan and showing that the Fortan was completely different than any other the deposit that we see in the Abbot Tibby. So we can put our hand on our heart now and say at the Fortan, 100% that we have seen of the nickel is a, a nickel in sulfide, which means uh, the concentrate would become a, what we call a class one nickel. And that is important because that class one nickel is the only nickel that trades on the London Metal Exchange. And that's how important that is. So everybody else, I think you've got a problem because you got a lot of nickel in, in silicates in your nickel. It means that the process that you're going to use is only going to recover somewhere between 40 and 60% of the nickel. Uh, the, the tried and true process of, um, that the, um, they have for nickel sulfites will have somewhere north of 90% recoveries, we believe just because the work that we've done, the science, shows that the pentlandite is individual grains, the calcopyrite, individual grains. As you grind that up, you'll be able to float. Um, and that's, that's the term they use at the mill. They'll float the sulfides and they'll, they'll scrape off the nickel and cobalt will go to one con and the copper, platinum, palladium and gold will go to another concentrate. One of those concentrates will go by train to um, maybe the Sudbury um, smelter and refinery. And the other uh, will go to maybe the Horn, which is a, um, a copper smelter, but you'll be paid for all of those metals you're shipping. Now, David, you mentioned two different words here. Can you summarize the key differences between nickel sulfide and nickel silicate? So, and I think that the key here in saying sulfides and silicates, um, the silicates are things like laterites, uh, uh, you know, um, deposits that you'd have in Indonesia, the Philippines, etc. cetera. Uh, these are big tons where they're moving, you know, huge amount of dirt to get a very small amount of nickel. And they have to, they use it in a process called nickel pig iron where they melt the whole thing down and they take the nickel and the, the iron together, which is a, it doesn't trade on the LME, is a lower quality product and has to go through some series to upgrade it to anything close that can be used in batteries. A nickel and sulfide, and then this is what pentlandite is and what we have and we've identified in the science that we've done. This, when you grind it and you float it, this is a class one nickel. So Sudbury, um, all, all of the major smelters uh, that I can think of in Europe or in Canada, they're geared to handling nickel sulfides. And so it's a process that's been understood for over 110 years. They, they, um, they can, and I'm not saying there's nothing easy in the mining business, but it's an easier, cheaper process to take a nickel sulfide concentrate and smelt it and refine it to a, a um, product that you can use either stainless steel or nickel cathode. And that is truly the biggest difference is that we can recover uh, so much more of the nickel out of uh, sulfide than we can recover out of a uh, silicon. David, for investors that are hearing about your company for the first time or investors that are long-term investors already in the company, what would be one thing you would want them to know today after hearing this interview? Well, this is, I think we could, uh, if we put it in terms of uh, baseball season that's just ended, uh, we are in the second inning. The last year we raised almost $8 million. Uh, we put that into the ground. We're, I believe, in excess of 20,000 meters of drilling. We have three drills. Uh, our intention is to do a, another 20,000 meters minimum next year. And if we have three, four, five drills, that would be my goal. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Fantastic. And for investors that want to learn more about the company, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you? I, I'd say start with the, 
the uh, website, go to quebecnickel.com. And through that, you can see the press releases and follow what's happened since uh, the, the founding of the company. Uh, we also have financial statements there. And also you can see our presentation where I haven't even talked about our nickel team and the experience that we have on the nickel team. And that would be a great place to get it. We have uh, uh, two top-notch nickel explorers on the board of directors, two top-notch nickel explorers on our technical advisory team, and uh, Gary DeShooter, who's a top-notch VP exploration. Uh, and he's worked for Falkenbridge Anglo. He's worked for a uh, big platinum uh, palladium company in Ontario and has all this exploration experience. And that's what we're bringing to bear in a company like this, where we have nickel uh, people that are looking for nickel. We don't have gold people that have stumbled across nickel. I love it. Thank you so much for your time. Once again, the CEO of Quebec Nickel Corp, David Patterson. Now I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research, before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss. In saying that, we believe this is a company that is greatly undervalued, underappreciated, and underexposed. Bring your attention to the symbols, QNI in Canada, QNICF in America, and they're also listed in Frankfurt, Germany. If you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners, we bring you the news, we bring you the analysis, CEO interviews, and we love to bring them to you first. David, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to have you back soon. Rich, I look forward to our next conversation. Should be fun. Always a pleasure, David. Keep up the great work. And thank you for watching. If you're not winning, you're probably not watching. This is Rich from Rich TV Live with David Patterson saying, have a nice day. We'll see you soon. Thank you.